Hey guys, welcome to a replay analysis. Today we're doing Platinum ZDP. Welcome back to the replay analysis section of YouTube with me, your host, Vibe Boo. If you guys don't know how the, if you don't know how these work, basically what we do is we don't put it on times eight. We uh we put it on normal speed for a moment here. We look at how the person is playing and what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, and what we can tell them to help figure out what they can do better. And again, this is Platinum, so one of the things that we're going to really look at is going to be your Larva, because the lower the, the lower the League goes, Platinum's kind of in the middle, but the lower the League goes, the more Larva is neglected, so that is going to be a big key point we're probably going to keep an eye on for the majority of the game. But so far your build's fine, so far your Overlord placement is fine, I like it, it's good. For versing a Protoss player, I love being able to see to spot cannon rushes with an Overlord. I also love your first Overlord just beelining it across the map to see what opener your opponent's going for. Makes it super easy to read Protoss. Uh, first drone <coughs> is fine. I would say a tad bit early, but not the big of a, it's not the big of a deal. But if you want to improve upon this, don't send your drone to your natural until if it's going to be drone number 16 or whatever. Don't send it until your minerals are about 180. If you send your drone at 180, you will get there right as you have 300. I would assume, just by what I just saw, you got there with 30 minerals to spare. You probably pulled your, your worker off at around 150. Let's see. You pull a drone right. Well, you made an overlord as well, so don't do that either. I didn't even notice you did that. I'm, wait, what? Hold on. Am I fucking going crazy right now? I'm going crazy right now. I, for some reason, I thought you were already at 16, and I just thought you made another Overlord. My bad. I'm losing my fucking mind right now. Now we're going to look at it. <laughs> my bad. Uh, I backed up way too far. <clears throat> so now, like, 150 is probably when you're going to pull, when it should be 180 from right now, because you're at 16 now. My bad. I, I kind of thought about it wrong. And you probably pull, like, right about now, I would say a drone gets pulled off the middle line. Uh, okay. <laughs> Your drones just don't mind fast enough, dude. Stack those close patches. <laughs> you pulled right around 180. Okay, well, this, this I mean, this I guess this map is kind of close as well. So it's a little confusing. <laughs> but you have the right idea. Pull around 180. Good, good for you. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's good quality content right there. <laughs> Okay, now we're going for a gas pool. <laughs> oh, fuck. Worst analysis ever. Okay, we'll see what you're doing from here. <laughs> so, I like your overlord chilling. It's good. Makes me happy. I also really like your non-emphasis of gas. That makes me really happy. Because... The, the fact that you're prioritizing your minerals is so much better than prioritizing your gas if you're not going to go for an all-in. You don't need to rush speed super fast, so I'm really glad you're not doing that. That's very, very good. So far, you're, you're playing fine. The, 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 honestly, the only thing I would say that you could do better is stack your close patches. Other than that, you're playing great. And what I mean by stacking close patches is if you look at the patches in the mineral line, the ones that are smaller are far patches always, and the ones that are larger are close patches always, if you don't know how to tell the difference. And another way you can tell the difference is what is closer to the hatchery. And obviously these two are closer than that one. So if you double click a close patch, it'll, like if you double click a patch that is the close patch, it'll only select close patches. If you're looking at the replay, for instance. So you can see I have this patch, this patch, this patch, and this patch selected because they're all surrounded in yellow. And then it's also getting some of the natural patches, which is why it has more than four. Always try to get two drones. Okay, and if you think about it like this, if you start with 12 drones, you could theoretically always get four drones on four patches and eight drones on close patches with your first 12 because eight plus four is 12. So you could always do it right away and it would make your money go up. It would make you have the most money possible. So it's something to work on if you're uh, if you don't know about that, d definitely work on that. I tell that to everybody because it's something I see so many people just never do, and there's no reason to not do it, and it actually gives you more income. Okay, you're making lings. Now these lings, 
here's what I'd say about your lings. If your lings are purely for defense, I would say these lings are too early with what you've seen with your overlord. So if you notice, check this out. We'll speed it up to right when you spot when you spotted it. Okay, I'll give I'll give it to you this way. Making these lings the way you make them right now, right this second, this is good against like Terran. Against Protoss, making them right away when your uh, when your hatchery is done, it really only makes sense if you were going to make lings to deal with something that was proxied. Something that is proxied. So, like, if you were th thinking to yourself, well, what if I don't know if what if he is? What if there was a chance that he was going to make proxy zealots out of like proxy gates? And you're like thinking maybe like 10 seconds from now or 20 seconds from now, the zealots are going to start walking out of fog of war. These things would make sense to start making them now against something like that. And I know you're probably just going to make the four and you're going to stop entirely. But making four links at this point in time, what you need to do with it. And this is, this is why I'm saying it's not something that's designed for Platinum League. It's more designed for like Masters Plus. What you have to do with these links now to make them worth it is you need to threaten something with your opponent. Like, it would be a good idea now to possibly run across the map with the Lings and maybe threaten, like, a counterattack in his mineral line if he runs out with the, an Adept or something like that. But if you make these four Lings and you sit here defensively with these Lings and that is it, it makes no sense if your plan is to be defensive only. And what you should do instead is you should make four Lings again around the time when your Queens are, like, almost done. We're talking, like, around 225, 230. You can make four lings then, and if he makes an adept right away, and he goes across the map, if you make lings around like 225, 230, you will still have lings in time to defend the adept when it comes to your base, and you'll have more drones faster, so you'll have more money to work with, because you will, you'll have had drones mining minerals for longer. You'll have a bonus like 40 minerals, basically, because you'll have two more drones for 20 seconds each. Okay, so this is also something to read. You know what I would already tell you? You know, you want to know what I would say from this? Like, I know I just clicked on the uh, the the gateway, and it doesn't. And I know I can see it up here, but it doesn't matter. Here's what I would say. This kind of a player already. You know what this makes me think? This dude's gonna go Stargate. You can already tell from the wall. Now I don't expect platinum players to be able to read this, but think about it like this, okay? This dude has one gateway. He has a core. He's making something out of the gateway. He is making nothing out of the core. There is no warp gate research going on right now in this core. And he could easily fucking afford it. So either one of two things is happening. He's either making a sentry first. And he went one gas expand. Which you'll be able to tell in a second if it turns into a sentry. Or he's going for an adept and a stargate. Because he has no emphasis on warp gate. That is... A lot of freed up gas. That's like it's basically it's the same thing when a Terran like skips a Reaper. It's like, are you just gonna rush a fucking factory then? Like, what are you doing with that gas? This looks like a Stargate now because he's doing no warp gate. He might get it later, but the fact that he doesn't just get it right away means he has no emphasis on doing any type of a debt pressure to you. Like we're talking about like a glaive pressure, nothing about that. He has no emphasis on going for like any type of zealot stalker pressure. With a really fast robo and a prism. He, he has, basically, there's no emphasis on anything that requires warp gate right away. Nothing like that. He doesn't give a shit about it. He cares about tech and he might he might prioritize Stargate first and then go warp gate after. So it already looks like warp gate. Or, sorry, it, it already looks like Stargate. From this. From what you've seen. And you can see it's an adept. So it really looks like Stargate now. And it is a Stargate. And he gets warp gate after. So this would tell me, you know what this tells me? This kind of a player, you don't know exactly what he's going to make out of the Stargate. He, he can still go straight up Sky Toss. He can still open Void Ray. He can still open Oracle, whatever. But against this kind of a player, all you got to do to screw this kind of a player over is, uh, I would say, on a, a good reaction to this would be, uh, maybe just make this your standard. Just make a couple extra queens. And you, you could do this in Platinum in general just to work on your creep spread. Just work on your creep spread to, to you know, always have good creep. Like, have queens to have creep spread. But if you, against this specifically, if you wanted to fuck this build over, if you just make extra queens, then he can't do shit. This build sucks if you make a couple extra queens. Ugh. 
<laughs> so you're making drones. And now, uh, you have the overlords in production? You do. Okay. So your build is it's going okay. I, I'm, I'm glad I'm seeing your drones are spaced out a bit. They're not all like at the exact same time. You have a drone. Some drones are like three seconds ahead of the other. That's good. It makes me feel like you're going five SD, 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 SD. Like you're just, or one SD for you. You're trying to make drones as fast as you can, which is definitely what you need to be doing. Uh, I would say this speed emphasis. Like check, th check this out, okay? Stuff like this is, these are things that you could do differently if you really know how to read a build. But if you want to always be standard about it, I won't say you're wrong. But check this out. You go for Zergling Speed right away. And you get all your drones spent, or all your larvae spent right away. Now, if you would know that this is one gate expand into a Stargate, based on what like, you're assuming that's what it's going to be, and you're, you're going to confirm it so, like soon after, I think a better response to this, to his build, would have been, you're not going to get pressured hard by anything on the ground. Like early, right away. He's not going for crazy like adept pressures. He's not. And also, just in Platinum in general, it doesn't happen very often. If you instead would have prioritized a third base, I would have liked that more per, for you because this game, it, there's nothing he's going to do to punish you if you just make queens and for all the reasons we just talked about. Now, I'm not going to go too heavily. I, that, that is, I'm, I'm going to leave it there at that. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there and say that that's it. That's that's all I would say for that one. Yo, yeah. Vicious Blow, thank you very much for the, the tier one sub, dude. What's up? Welcome to VFAM. So I'm not expecting you to have perfect reactions in every way. Okay, you're, you're, this is Platinum League. This is not Masters. So I'm not going to go too heavily in that in that degree or that department of talking about how we're going to analyze this. Oh, yeah. uh, Gibzilla, thank you very much for the 2 month sub. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. Love you, Vibo. Love you too, dude. Thank you, man. Uh, I would say you could play standard. Okay, you could play standard. And if you just... If you play standard and your, style, your standard style is speedlings... Then that's fine. I wouldn't mind going in, in depth. I want masters, but here's the thing: this is this is the reason why I don't want to go in depth with you, Proxy and Chill. It's because I don't think you can handle it. Don't take offense to this, but players in Platinum cannot handle it. Players in Diamond can't even handle it. You, what you need, what you need is you need a oh, sequence that's that's repetitive, yeah. and I th and also I think that uh, here's another thing I would say: I don't think you should be going speedlings right now. I think speedlings make no sense if you don't know how to use them and the reason why it's so confusing is because it changes based on what your opponent does so here's a here's a for instance okay and your rimlick rimlick thank you as well for the six month resub thank you guys now if we're going to go in depth with speedlings you scout what looks like a stargate what you should do against this is you should make more speedlings right when your speed is about done and you should focus on never letting him have a third base because my guess is if he goes for one gate skips warp gate fast stargate I get my guess is if he goes for aggression, he's going to go Oracle. If he goes for a fast third, he's going to go Void Ray. <clears throat> if you made speedlings when your speed was almost done, if that's your priority, your goal then should be don't let him have a third base and do not over invest into lings either. We're talking, you would literally make in total about 20 Zerglings. You'd make about, you already have four and you'd make about another 16. So you'd make about eight more larvae of lings and then that's it. You stop and you would fully focus on not letting him have a third base because what we'll come back to this in a second when your speed is almost done that's when you start lings and when your speed is done i guarantee he's going to get ready to set up a third shortly after that like he'll probably take a third between if he's going to do a void ray third base he'll probably take a third between 330 and four minutes which is right around the time when your speed will finish so if you did this oh, it would make sense to go yeah. speed lings early but if you don't understand this concept, it makes what no sense that? to go speed links. Yo, man, man, thank you as well for the 13 months, man. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. These are things that are more in depth. Speed links are units that require you to know your shit. Roaches, defensive like gasless, like or like late gas roach styles, are things that don't require, do not require you to know your shit as much. They're cheaper on larva and they're super durable against most things, and they're defensive. So I would I would say already if you want to do a build that's just gonna be easier for you to do I would say do roach styles like do like literally beat a gym style roaches. But we'll like yeah we'll, we'll talk about speed things though it's okay you're going for speed style so it's fine. 
But again, there, what you should be doing right now is you, sh you should be making drones. You should be making queens. You should have made your third base like you did. And because you prioritized speed before hatchery at your third, you should make about 16 more lings when the speed's almost done, and you should deny his third base, which he will probably go for. I like your queen movement against adept. I like I really like your queen movement. I don't like your lings though. I think your lings should be back a bit. Because if it is an adept, your lings will just get picked off unless you micro it immediately right away, which just puts pressure on you. So you're making mass drones. Which I agree I again that's that's not the worst case in the world. It's not the worst. It's just that if you're gonna make mass drones, it would have made more sense to prioritize your third before speed. Your your build, I would say, is like so far up to at this point of the game, you're like 90% of where you could be at this point. In terms of like the order of what you built. It's a little bit behind, but it's not that bad. The fact that you're not injecting your natural is not good. And the fact that you're, I mean, you're, your next queen is going to pop to spawn your larva and your main, which is nice. But you're not injecting your natural. And you're not also spreading creep at all. And you have plenty of energy to do it. That's not great. You've had over 14 energy at this point in counting. Now it's 15, 16, 17, 18... So it's kind of, you're kind of missing the beat here on uh, your, uh, I don't know what these kids are doing. Now, if you have no idea what he's doing, uh, that's very realistic. But again, like remember what I said? If he goes Oracle, he's probably going to be aggressive. And if he goes Voidray, he'll probably take a fast third. You could figure out what he's going to do as well with a Zergling Scout in front of his base. So if he made those lings, you could check the front door of his base. And you want to know what you'd see? You would see a Stalker. And what would you see? Two Adepts. Do you know what that means? And you'd also see a gateway that's building right now. That means he's going to be aggressive. And he should be for this to make sense. So you could tell that if you used your speed links, which you have. But you're not using them. They're chilling. So, again, this, this kind of goes in the category of you need to know what you're doing with speed legs all the time. You should be checking his door to see how often he makes units. How often is he making units? If he's making units the whole time and he's making another gateway on top of that, like that's not even part of the wall. It's just another gate behind his wall. He's probably going to be aggressive. And if you see an oracle, he's probably going to be aggressive. It means he's going to try and throttle your drones by killing them. That's most likely what this means. So if you knew what that was what was going to be, having creep spread and queens is nice. And then if it's an oracle for sure, you can make a spore color per mineral line and you're great. Another thing you should need to do is your queen. Like, again, I don't like the way your queens got used entirely. So we'll go back to your queens for a second. Your queens spawn. And you go for double inject. I don't like this. If your plan is to go for a third base, I would much rather have preferred you to go for... If you're going to go for a third, a speedling expand to a third base, I would prefer you to go for an inject, a tumor, and then make another queen immediately at your main as fast as you can while taking your third and shit like that. And then you pu you pull both your queens down from your, from your main and your natural down to the front of your creep. And you cover the creep while you try to spread it, which allows you to zone out his adepts even harder... And it also allows you to cover your third base when it, by the time it's done, so you can also do the same thing for your third. Now, you would use these queens to also not only spread creep as well, but also continue to inject the natural. So one of those queens at your natural would inject it, and one of those would spread creep even further. So you could get creep going this way, and also going this way. And then you could eventually get creep going this way. Like, it'd be really nice. And then your next queen that spawns in your main base could continue the injects. That's what I would prefer you have to have done with your queens. But the fact that your queen's kind of chill for a while, it's just neglected. And that you can't let you... Like, if you're going for builds like Speedling Expand, your build is super weak because this kind of a build requires you to have good information. So if this build feels like it just feels like shit all the time, I would highly recommend you honestly go back to Beta GM style roach, roach openers with like two base layer, make roaches, safety roaches, take a third, saturate it, make safety, whatever units, and then go to a fourth base, go to 80 workers, then go to Roach Hydra. If this build feels awkward for you, just go back to that for a little while and get better at that, and then come back to this once you're like in diamond. Is, that's just a disclaimer I would throw out there, because there's already points in this build that are just being super missed, and it's going to continue to happen if you're in platinum, because it's going to feel overwhelming. 
It would e even feel overwhelming for Diamond players. It would even feel overwhelming for Masters players. It's not a build that's easy. You can always improve on it. But we'll still continue talking about this to see what, like, you should be doing with what you're doing. So, like, see your larva that's sitting here? You have five larvae sitting here. That's not ideal. Uh, and I would say the reason why five larvae is sitting there is because I think... So, I think what's happening here to you is this, this is the part where it's going to make no sense. Or, you know, like, it makes no sense for a player in Platinum, but it does once you start understanding shit. You have stretched your economy too thin in a way where you've gone for a third base. You've gone for speed, which means you've also gone for gas. And you've gone for multiple queen production, constant, like constant queen production out of all your hatcheries. All of these things together means that, and you also went double inject. So like you cannot afford to spend all the larvae you have. And you're kind of, kind of chilling on it because it's just too much investment all at once. On too many different things. So if you would have made a creep tumor, you could already have a creep tumor done by like maybe even two done by now because a creep tumor happens faster than an inject. And you could have creep all the way down to like right there, probably right now. Going to your third, and you'd have your third pretty much almost covered. You'd also have much more mobility with your queens because your edge of your creep would probably be like right there. So you could zone out adepts further away. But because you did this, what's gonna happen now is this hatchery is almost larva blocked. This hatchery is larva blocked. So you've injected the hatchery to have larva at it, but now it's blocked, so it's not generating larva anymore anyways. So the automation of larva is just gone. So you're missing a mechanic entirely, which is 50% of your larva from your natural. So it makes your build awkwardly bumpy up and down. It makes it make no sense. And it also is going to make it harder to protect your base in the general in the future because you have a very poor creep spread right now. <coughs> I don't know if you hear my voice whistling, but my throat, my throat's so dry. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so basically, your build overall, all, without making it sound confusing, and again, this is where, the, this is why this build is going to be super advanced, okay? But I'm, I'm trying to make it sound as doable as possible. What you should have done is this. You can go for speed, just like you did. You can go, okay, as soon as I get 100 gas, get speed, take two off. For now, that's fine. For now, that's fine. For platinum, okay, go for it. Take your third base when you can afford it. And then always go for eject, creep spread. Inject main, creep spread natural, make another queen in your main, pull your queen from your main down to your natural, and call it a day. And then you still inject your natural with one of these two queens every time you can, when it's up, and you always have the other queen always continue creep spreading. And then you can make a fourth queen when you can afford it after you've switched your larva, so that you can have three queens on three hatcheries as soon as they're done, and one queen still throwing creep tubers out there. That is like your That could be your standard opener. And then if you were to spot something that looks like a Stargate, you could throw down another queen and go to either five or six queens and you'd be great. Super good. But if you if you just don't really know how to scout very well, if you're just like, I don't really understand how to read builds, uh, then you could just stand four queens every time and you could have two queens push away the first Oracle and you could then make spores and you'd be fine. You still wouldn't lose very much because I don't expect a Platinum player to kill like 10 drones. It's very unlikely. And don't worry, if I'm talking really fast and you're like, wait, what the fuck are you saying, dude? Vibe, slow down. I'm going to make this a VOD so you can always watch it in the future. So I, there will be that. You can always watch this in the future as well. But so far already, like your lack of creep, your lack of larva usage, uh, like too much. It's it, it's just not as efficient. The, the speed links aren't really doing anything. You're not reading any. You have zero information about his build. And uh, other than that, he's probably going Stargate from the late delayed warp gate tech. But yeah. And what should have what should be happening as well is you should have a queen. You could spend two rounds. So think about it like this, okay? If you go for a third base speed link expand, to know that you timed it properly, your first queen that spawns out of your natural should be able to get two rounds of things off. Two rounds of whatever. And then it should walk to the third base. And it should be able to inject the third base as it finishes. So you should generate, in total, 75 energy by the time your third finishes off of your queen at your natural. And it starts with 25. So really you're generating 50. So when it spawns, you make a tumor. You make a second tumor. You walk to your third. When third finishes, you instantly inject it. 
That's how it. Sh that's how it should be. And if you're like, wow, my queen doesn't have enough energy, it means you might have made your queen a little bit too late, or it means you might have made your third base way too fucking early, and you wasted the larva while doing that. So that's how you know you did it right, I would say. Like, mo it, 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 there's a little bit of leeway where maybe you're like at 21 energy when it finishes. That's fine. We're just talking about if you're like at two energy. So you've, you've, you've had 52 energy, not 75, and your third's done. That means you probably saved a bunch of larva and you didn't spend it. Or it means you made your queen way too fucking late and you only had uh, 50 energy generated now instead of 75. Because your queen is super fucking late. Hopefully that makes sense. But the fact that your third's not being injected and you can inject it is a problem. Like that's that's super delayed. And now you're gonna just make a new queen at it, and it's it's also supply blocked. You're wasting so much larva again doing that. Cause these look at these queens are doing, they're just sitting on their ass. Okay, she goes over to inject it now. That was a pretty late inject, though, but I'm glad you did it eventually anyways. You just keep in mind, you should have a queen going to the third base as it's still under construction, like almost finished. And now you see a stargate, and you see another gateway. So, once again, <coughs> remember what I was talking about with speedlings? If you check this base with your speedlings, which is what you should be doing with this kind of a build, because this build is super fragile... If you react poorly with speedling openers, it sucks really bad because speedlings are very larva expensive. So if you had if you had seen the front of his base, you would have seen another gateway, multiple adepts, and a stalker. And now that you scouted his main with your overlord, which I like a lot, you see you finally see the stargate, and you also see another gateway. This dude is on three gates already, guaranteed. So anyone who's on three gates is most likely. Like, he might be, again, this is platinum, so people do weird fucking shit. But this build makes no sense now to take a third base defensively. He should attack you now. He's been making constantly uh, on adepts. He's chrono boosted the Stargate. And he's making multiple gateways beyond the point of, like, being able to sustain production out of them while taking a third base super fast. So, I would be not surprised if this dude... And, but you can also see he's, not, he's also not building anything out of the Stargate, so he might take a third. But I would say you get a link immediately to his thirds and go, are you going to take a third? And if he's not, if we get to like five minutes, you should be getting ready to be attacked. That's how you should read this. But you're not using speed things at all. So again, that, that, again, that's just all I'm saying. But like, it makes it hard for you if you're not using your units properly. Like you have to be very active with speed link styles to make it sense of them. He's still making nothing out of the Stargate. Warp Gate's done. You can see it as the gateway's done. Now he's making a forge and a council. You really, really need to see if he's got a third at this point. If he does not have a third still, and he now is making a forge and a council, this guy's build is so inefficiently bad in terms of, like, something efficient. And all you have to do against this now is literally make a Roach Warren. I, okay, good. I, was, I thought you made three Evo Chambers. I was like, oh, God. Double Evo Chamber as well is a bit much. You don't need Double Evo Chamber. Don't ever get Double Evo Chamber against Protoss. Uh, unless you're planning on going for, like, Swarm Hosts with, like, Zerglings and Hydras. Or, or like, Ling Bane Hydra. Even then. don't. I would say don't get Double Evo Chamber. If you go Carapace here, it makes no sense. I don't like it. Uh, you should just get a single Evo Chamber and upgrade the unit you're, what you're going to focus on. Which is going to probably be Roaches now. I would say if you're going to go for melee upgrades, you're probably going to do it really fast. You're probably also not going to stop mining gas to make it worthwhile. But if you still are making mass legs and waiting on a melee upgrade by the time he could possibly have like resonating glaives, that's not a good idea. And Carapace will not do anything to help you there. Your, your units will still die in this. So basically think about it like this. If you go Lings against Adepts and you get Carapace, with Carapace, Lings die in two hits from an Adept. Without Carapace, Lings die in two hits from an Adept. It doesn't change anything. It just costs a lot of money. So there's breakpoints where Carapace is fucking pointless. The only time Carapace makes sense is if you're honestly going to go realistically into Hydras. And then there's also a chance you're going to fight against Sky Toss bullshit like Carriers and stuff like that. Then it makes sense. So if you're going to go Roaches behind a speeding opener and you're going to make Roaches, 
You should just get plus one missile weapons and call it a day on one Evo chamber. That's it. Do not. I, I know you're gonna. Get, I already know you're gonna get Carapace, but it makes no sense to get Carapace in this situation. It just slows you down. If you saw, if you saw a fleet beacon in his base, if you were like, "Oh fuck, this dude's got a fleet beacon already," and he's like making one carrier at this point out of one Stargate, one carrier fleet beacon, I'd be like, "Yeah, you could get Carapace. That's fine," because it would make sense then, because it's Skytoss. So get Carapace if you're going Hydras. Only if he's going like Skytoss. If you're going... Okay. If you're going... Oh, yeah. I love, Chad, I love you guys. I love you, boys. Um, you guys are missing the point here. Let me explain it like this. Robo, Templar, and Gateway. All text except for Stargate. Carapace is irrelevant. It's, it's irrelevant. It's super irrelevant. It doesn't change the break... Like, you could figure this out yourself if you look at the breakpoints of how much damage does the unit do and how much health does the unit have that it's trying to kill. Carapace literally does not do... It's not like if an Archon hits for 40 damage. If you have level 1 Carapace, it now only does 30 damage. And if you have level 2 Carapace, it only does 20 damage. It doesn't work like that. It's not percentage-based. It's literally a value of 1. So if an Adept does 22 damage to a Zergling... Which, and a Zergling has 35 health in total. 22 plus 22 is 44. If you have one Carapace, it takes one damage off of that da that attack. So it's going to be 21 plus 21, which is 42. Which still, two shots of Zergling. If you had level 2 Carapace, it's 20 plus 20, which is 40. Which is 40 damage, which is still more than 35. If you had level 3 Carapace, it's 19 plus 19, which is 38. Which is two shot. It's still two shots of Zergling. You could have level 3 armor Zerglings versus level 0 weapon adepts, and it's still two shots your Zerglings. So, again, it depends what you're going for. You have to kind of learn these these uh, pairings of units as to what makes sense. And if you scouted these this dude's units, you would see he's going mass adepts. And if you're going to respond to this with uh, Zerglings, getting Carapace is pointless. Getting Roaches makes more sense because a Carapace upgrade is the same cost as six Zerglings. Or, uh, Jesus. Six, I'm reading chat while talking. Uh, getting Carapace is the same cost as six Roaches. I would much rather have six Roaches than a wasted Carapace upgrade. But you're getting Missile Weapons, so I mean, I feel like you're going Roaches already, which is good. And what is the second Evo Chamber going to do? I mean, if you have double Evo Chamber, I would, I would hope this is melee, but I feel like it's going to be Carapace. But I would say getting the melee as well is irrelevant right now because it doesn't take priority right now on anything. Okay, so how many drones died? You lost 18 drones. All right, that was fucking painful. I didn't think that many died to be honest. Uh, oof. <laughs> I was gonna be like, your drone count's not as good as it should be in terms of like, you know, you could have just done a beta gym build, and you'd have been fine. Beta gym build gets you a good perk account pretty fast, anyways. It's comparable to what you've already done this game. I'll just throw it out there and say that. Uh, but yeah, you lost a lot of drones, so that's fucking that sucks. <clears throat> now, again, this just kind of reinforces the fact that I was saying where I would say, don't hesitate to go check out Beta GM style again. It'll help you so much. Like, you're not gaining a really big. You might think that going speedling expand into a third base is going to get you miles ahead. Opposed to beta GM opener, which is like the defensive gasless two base into a like it's a delayed gas two base into a layer and roaches. You would, but I'm gonna tell you right now, even if you didn't lose these drones, you would be in practically the same position you would be otherwise with beta GM or this build. It's very similar because you're going roaches anyways. You're not really like you may, you went for speedlings because here's the thing, going for gas early into speedlings, getting speed itself. It requires you to do something with the Lings to make it worthwhile, and the Lings have done literally zero up until this point. So a beta, like that, that kind of defeats the purpose of going for the faster third. It, it's a big negative on your economy. 
Fifty dollars for a math lesson? Hell yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. I'm just trying to make it make sense. And uh, like all I'm seeing, like guys, if you want my honest opinion, this is why I don't recommend people to go speedlings and platinum, because they over like they don't use the shit they have to do. And when I when you explain to them, I'm not I'm not talking about the guy. I'm talking about okay. So Jesus Christ, it's always so hard to explain this when I'm trying to like not be rude, and at the same time I'm trying to be realistic. Players in Platinum cannot handle what you're supposed to do with units like Speedlings. They just can't. So when you do it, and you don't do what you're supposed to do, and you don't read builds like you're supposed to, it puts you behind for no reason. Like, you're not, like, you don't just go Speedlings and you're like, well, I'm ahead now. Because if you don't use Speedlings properly, you're not ahead. You're behind. Because you invested the gas to do it, and you did nothing with it. That's the hardest thing to explain. To, to in, in general to people overall <laughs> like this dude's build makes no sense as well he's going for such high amounts of production and then he goes for a third base defensively it, it, again we're talking platinum I want to stop looking at his build at this point and look at yours so you have zero information and zero reads on a third base. And regardless if you go speedlings or not, you really need to go find out if the Protoss takes a third base or not. Because if you go for drones like you did, you lost 18 drones. And on top of that, you just kept making drones. We're talking at almost seven minutes. You have four roaches and four lings. And you're making drones again. If, you, if this dude didn't have a third base... If this dude did not have a third base, you would be fucking dead. If you were in Masters League, you would already be dead by now. Because in general, five minutes is the magic number for Protoss, okay? Five minutes. If Protoss takes a third base before five minutes or right at five minutes, it means they are playing standard or really greedy based on how much earlier it is. If they take a third base at 4.45 to five minutes, that's in the realm of standard. <clears throat> if they take a third base at like 4.20... That is pretty fucking greedy. If they take a third base at like 350 to 4 minutes, that is ridiculously fucking greedy. That would be like the guy went for one stalker, one void ray, third base. Off of one gateway into a one star gate. And he just takes a third right away, which is what I was talking about earlier. You could totally do that. And if you saw that with a speedling, you could easily kill it with speedlings. That's why scouting is important, right? But if you see a third base at 5 minutes... That's standard. If you don't see a third base by 5 minutes, by 5.20, if we're talking about like higher level play, by 5.20, if your Protoss opponent does not have a third base by 5.20, there is a very high chance they should have like 6 to 8 gateways in their base, and they're going to all in the crap out of you. If we go back to 5 minutes and look at this guy's third timing, like look at 5 minutes in his base. The reason why he doesn't have eight gateways is because this guy has no real build plan he has gone for every tech already by five minutes he's done all three techs by five minutes and that makes no sense he's gone for three gates a robo a stargate a council and he's got all four gases pumping without even full saturation of mineral lines that's where his money's going if he was going to all in you it could have been Straight up council on like seven gates with like maybe one gate being proxied and six gates at his base. It could have been a robo with same thing. Like he could easily have done some type of like he could easily have like seven to eight gateways in his base by five to five twenty, mostly a five twenty, and you'd be like, holy shit, this is scary. But like if you had a link in his third base and you got to this point like right here, like look at the look at the delayed third. Five minutes, no third. Five twenty, no third. Five thirty, no third. Not even started. Like, this is ridiculous. And look at how much money he has as well. He has 900 minerals just sitting there. An efficient player could totally kill you right now if you don't pay attention to this third base timing. And you would die. Because if, if the guy, if this was a Masters player, he would already be attacking you right now. And what do you have to defend your base? You have four lings and nine drones in production. You would totally die. You would 100% die. So you really need to pay attention to third timing, regardless of if you do or don't get speed. Try to have like a link at his third base if you can. It's very important against Protoss. It helps you understand how, what they're doing. 
And you can see he took a third base at 540. 540 third base tells me that is so fucking late. If he's not all inning me, his build's super inefficient. And look what his build is. Again, we, as we're talking about, it's Stargate, Robo, Council all together before third. And three gates and uh, a forge with upgrades. Charge and plus one. Like this dude is doing all the things in the book of Protoss before he goes for a third base. Which is super inefficient if he's not doing a timing. So for you to react to this, how you would read this and go, okay, well, how do I, uh, how do I react to this as the Zerg player and make my life easier? If you scouted his base with the overload like you did, and you went, what the fuck? You have a lot of tech. You have, a, you don't have a bunch of gateways. You just have a ton of diversified tech. A great way to react to that, but for you, would be to not freak out and not overcommit to units. Just make a round of some units that can defend the little bit of pressure he might do to you. Because you really need to do something. You can't just have pure drones forever. And then just saturate your bases. So, like, we're talking, like, you could have 66 drones. And have, like, 10, just, like, 10 roaches. Just, like, 10 roaches. Take a fourth base. And then continue to scout him and see what he does. And if you saw he committed to a third base, you could then saturate your fourth base. Totally. You could totally saturate your fourth base and be fine. So that's how you would want to read this, in my opinion, about what you should have done for yourself this game. Read that he's going for all... Like, just basically the big thing that you want to know is he doesn't have eight gateways. He has three. Three gateways is not all in. Three gateways is more the harass category. It's like pressure, harassment, things like that. It's not like a big power move by Protoss. So if you see three gates and that's it, and you see all types of tech, especially when you see a Stargate for the longest time that hasn't even been used... He has not built a single unit out of this Stargate in like the last three minutes. That's great. It feels good because you're like, okay, well, who cares? Like I can make some units to defend a potential little poke and I can drone my ass off. And then once you get to that high drone count, you can just explode with units and you'd be fine. And again, the only way you can figure this out is with scouting with lings and with overlords. You saw four oracles. There's only two oracles. I think you uh, you might have seen two oracles at two, like two different times, and you might have assumed he has four oracles. You killed two of them. He's lost nothing so far. He's lost a probe. You haven't. There's only been two oracles. I think you just saw two oracles, and then he went across the map, and then he came back, and was again, and you were just like, "Holy fuck, two more oracles!" You probably just, I get it. You probably just saw them twice, two different times, and. You thought it was four. It's a misread. It happens to everybody. It's totally fine. Chat, shut up. <laughs> it's totally fine. There's only two oracles, though. There are only two oracles. Um, but yeah, like it's... Uh, the the correct response against oracles is just make sport color. That's totally fine. Um, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is... Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is... Is that... You're putting yourself in a situation with a build that needs to scout, so you have to scout. If you don't scout and you open up speedling expand styles with mass drones, you're going to die a lot. You have to react. This is a very highly reactive build that needs to be reacted with. So that again, that's another reason why. I think as I've said like two times already, now this will be the third time. Why I would say it just probably would make more sense to just kind of drop this build for now and go back and do beta gym style. Because it'll, it, you don't really have to scout with beta gym style. It's super basic. It really is just making drones. Because it's roach based. It's not speedling based. This is, even though you made a roach warrior, this is not a roach based opener. This is an exposed opener with three bases that needs to be scouted better. So uh, your opener has, <clears throat> if yeah, it's just, there's, Gaps and holes here and there. Your creep spread's not that bad overall. It's getting better as the game goes on, which is very props to you for that. That's super good. Keep that up. Keep working on that. That's really nice. I did not expect to see your creep to look like this. I'm not going to lie. I thought your creep was going to look like shit. <laughs> your creep looks great for platinum, according to what I saw earlier on when you just sat there for like a minute doing nothing. That's a really good creep spread for you so far. That's your best quality that I've seen so far. Keep it up. Keep doing that. That's very good. That's required. That if you want to know what makes a Zerg good in Masters, by the way, or like GM, it's your creep spread. Good Zergs have good creep. Bad Zergs have bad creep. It does this. It does make a. It's a very noticeable difference about how good you are at this game. 
So keep doing that. That's very impressive. Now, this, again, oh, I'm not the biggest fan. Yeah. Yo, Jeremy, thank you very much, dude, for the 18 month resub. Vibu Shodong. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, this, however, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Spire and Infestation Pit. Infestation Pit's okay to get you to Hive for better upgrades, but I'm not a fan of the Spire. Spire is, another. It's a, again, another thing, just like Speedlings, that is, in my opinion, kind of over the top of where the skill level should be. Mutas, are, mutas and Corruptors are very particular types of things, when and where to make them and how to use them. And if you don't, if you just kind of make Mutas and, like, sit there, that unit, is, you're just wasting your money. That unit scales like shit if you don't, if you're not active with it. Whereas if you just made Hydras and just, a, like, A-moved when you maxed out, it's so much easier. It's so much more effective uh, for a player who's not micromanaging units at, like, 300 AP of the entire game. And now you can see, here's his little poke. So who cares? Your cream threads alerted you and you reacted fast. I love it. That did literally nothing to you. It was it shouldn't have done anything either. It's just three zealots, so good job. Your drone count now is 81. You're honestly you're playing this like beta GM with a speed link opener. I would yeah. Uh just know the only thing I can say that's bad about your speed link opener, the only thing I don't like about it is that you just don't scout enough. That's it. Uh, if you if you really want to practice your scouting, I wouldn't mind if you do speed link openers. The fact that you're rotating into what looks like a beta gym style build now anyways is totally fine. You could open that way straight up if you don't really want to scout for now. But if you do open speed links, you have to scout. Otherwise, it's absolutely pointless. And then when you scout, you need to start committing to like to like knowledge for your Zerg brain that goes... How do I best react to certain things? And this is not something that you can learn in one day. This is shit that will build over months of experience. Like that's the, that's the that's the hard part. That's why everyone struggles in Diamond League is because when you start having to commit one after another after another after another, another thing, you can't just do it all at once. It does take time. It takes time. It's it's impossible to say otherwise. Love the passion and effort for this content. Also, thanks, Mike, for submitting your replay so we can all learn. Yeah, you know, uh, the papoose, the pap, the papoose, dap, dap papoose. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm saying your name right, but dude, thank you for the ten. I appreciate you, much love. Uh, but yeah, Mike, it, it's just your scouting. The only thing I don't like is your scouting. And then again, when it comes to scouting, if you're gonna go, uh, for something that's really heavily focused on scouting like this. You need to have good reactions. And those take, again, they take time to learn. That's all it is. So you have to be patient with yourself. It takes time. Uh, yeah. But like you can see, your macro is kind of dropping off. That that kind of shit's going to happen to you a lot when you do builds that require you to be active all over the place. It's just It just takes experience and time to like muscle memory re repetitively hit shit and get your timings down. But again, your creep is fucking great. For platinum, your creep is crushing platinum. This is like low masters creep spread right now. Your creep at the beginning looked like fucking silver lake or gold lake, but your creep after that now it looks literally like it could be upper diamond low, low upper diamond to low masters. This is really fucking good creep spread for platinum, super good. Honestly, I, I I'll say masters. This looks like masters level creep spread now. You're at nine minutes and you're already halfway across the map. That's fucking solid. Keep doing that. <clears throat> okay, you have a bunch of roaches. You gotta be careful though. Now you're getting in a situation where you're going mass roaches and you have 3,000 minerals in the bank and you're at 10 minutes and you're not maxed. If you're gonna go mass ro just roaches and that's it, you should have honestly been maxed. I'm not even kidding. By like anywhere in the 8 minute mark realm of time. 8, 810, 815, 825, 830, 845. You could literally have been maxed by 8 minutes with how your build went. Because the crazy thing is, is you can honestly max on roaches by almost seven minutes if you go really fucking fast. And if we're talking about the fact that you lost 18 drones, you could have maxed out by probably eight something. Like we'll be generous and say like 830 would be very realistic for Platinum League with losing drones like you did. If that's all you're going to make. 
<laughs> now here's the scary thing. If you're sticking on roaches and your supply and you're, you're doing things like not spending your money properly, you have uh, like, what is that? 5,200 resources in the bank right now. That's a lot. You could easily use, you wouldn't even deplete all of that bank if you just maxed out right now on roaches. Uh, and you have 26 larvae to do it as well. So if you don't max out within like the next two seconds, it's just, again, even if you max out in two seconds, that's still not good. But it's just like a neglect of your spending. The only way roaches are going to work against Protoss is if you have way more supply than they do. The fact that you're actually behind by one supply is super scary for you because roaches are going to scale like absolute garbage. If you get to his base and he's at like 180 supply or 190 supply and you're just maxed out on roaches, you're going to be like, well, I'm trying to fight against like six immortals and like six archons with a bunch of gateway units in the front. Your roaches are going to get the worst trades of their lives. They're going to get awful trades. The only way it works then is if you have like burrow move or if you have multi-prong aggression that's like really executed very well. But if you just come in from one angle, he's going to murder you pretty hard. I do like that you're getting a lurker den and a hive. That's very good. I, uh, where's your hydrogen? I like that you're going to, you're going into hydrogen upgrades already too. I want you to eventually, I would love it if you switch into lurker hydra like zergling. That'd be great. That'd be super good. Uh... But if you're going to go roaches like this, you need to, like, do something faster. You cannot just max roaches and sit there forever and miss your timings for them to be effective. Otherwise, you're basically throwing money down the toilet. You're just, like, lighting it on fire. It just it becomes a waste. Your map awareness is your best skill. I can already... Dude, get better at the things I'm telling you to get better at. Uh, we've already talked about a lot. But don't try to do that while not losing your map awareness. Your map awareness is fucking legit. Like, scouting needs to be better. But your defensive map awareness is really good. I love your overlord spreads. You're doing even more right now. Uh, you just sent, like, seven more overlords out to go scout. Your creep spread is fucking baller for platinum. Don't lose that. Try your... Like, literally, rem if, remember this. Try your best to incorporate other things we're talking about. But do not lose your creep spread. Do not lose your overlord spread. Do not lose those aspects of your gameplay because they're way better than platinum keep doing those and getting masters for you is a very real goal and now here you see so this guy is get, like this is that moment when you have again a platinum player who has a very complicated army and he's microing it like absolute crap you can see he has uh, where's his archives? He does he forget totally forgot to get he totally forgot to get storm. His dudes have almost 200 energy. They're very high energy, so he has no storms here. He also has a lot of sentries. This dude has like 11 spellcasters, and they're diversified because there's multiple of them, and he's casting zero spells. This is the kind of shit in platinum that I would be like, this guy is making his life way too complicated. If he just made Immortals and Stalkers and, and Archons and Zealots, it would have been much easier. It's just full-on A-move, and he still would have killed Roaches uh, defensively if he, like, if, you're to, if you took this long to go for Roaches. Uh, but yeah, you're, like, you should lose this fight, but you're actually winning this fight because he's not casting any Force Fields. He's put himself in a bottleneck of his base, so he's not even using half of his army as well, and he can't even storm you. And he has half of his army is literally fucking Templar to storm. He casts zero Force Fields that whole fight. And yet, even though that was the worst, now he force fields as you run away. <laughs> Plucky ducky, what are you doing? So, even though that guy microed that fight about as awful as you possibly could have, he still crushed you because that's how good roaches are. <laughs> roaches fucking suck. Unless you have a big supply lead. You have to have a supply lead. Like, seriously, if you're going to go mass roaches, it needs to be something like, you're at 200 supply, Protoss is at like 120. You have to have like an 80 supply lead for you to even have a chance to be effective. Because even then, if the Protoss is defensively assertive and they do force fields and they do like disruptor shots or storm or the, what, whatever the fuck they have, void rays on overcharge, who cares? If they do like battery overcharge, Sim City, if they have defensive assertiveness in their build and they just absorb you with roaches as you try to come forward and like bash them over the head, Protoss can almost always cost efficiently soak up roaches. It'll just be overwhelming. It'll be overwhelming in a way where it'll be difficult for Protoss to deal with if they're 80 supply behind. But if you're not 80 supply ahead as Zerg, your Roach Wave is going to get smashed. 
And even though that was, like I said, it was an awful fight for Protoss, it, was, it looked awful. It looked terrible. He still crushed you. And it's because you guys had very similar supplies. I like your lurker upgrades. Uh, I would say at this point now, stop making roaches. Uh, okay, so the fact that you're making corruptor, I disagree with. You you gotta pick a plan. You got, I feel like you have no plan here. It's kind of all over the place. And I would ask, what is the point of corruptor right now? What is the corruptor point? I would say because you've chosen to go for hive and because you've chosen to go for a lurker den, what you should do, you saw carrier. Did you scout it just now with an overlord? Oh, Let me see. I want to see your vision. Yeah. Where was your last scout? Okay, your scout's right now. Okay. Alrighty. So here's something that might make you feel more enlightened, okay? I'm glad you said this. I'm glad we just saw this because this is huge. Yo, Super Snail, thank you very much, dude, for the... Uh, the, tw the 23 month resub welcome back you're one month away from two years hell yeah dude thank you so I would say making corruptor right now would make sense if you saw carriers in production right now and there were already carriers in his army it would make sense then but right now you just fought him or no you're, you're uh, not, not even you're about to fight him you are fighting him right now, and you see no production in here in his base. Do not get caught up in the moment where you go, oh, fuck, carriers? I got to go carrier, anti-carrier now. Because look at his army. Like, don't, like, so I'm glad you scouted his tech. That props. Super good. This is, this is where the scouting kind of becomes, like, complicated in StarCraft, and it, it's difficult. Keep watching. No, just, just listen, 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 listen. I know, I know he makes carriers eventually, okay? But I'm trying to, let me just explain this point. Because you making corruptors was absolutely wrong here. He has no carriers in production. There's no buildup of carriers. You see his army right now is pure anti-ground. It's Zealots, it's Archons, it's Stalker, it's Immortal, it's Sentry, it's High Templar. It is not five or eight, ten carriers. It's not Sky Toss. It's ground. If you lose this army like you do... And you remake Hydras, like you do. And you have Lurker upgrades, like you do. And you have upgrades on Evo Chambers, like you do. Hydras, with armor upgrades, will beat the shit out of two carriers. Or four carriers. No problem. Not one bit of a problem. And if you go Lurkers and Hydras, which is what you've invested into heavily with upgrades and tech, your Aspire is pretty half-assed right now. You have what level one weapons. It's not gonna do a lot. Also, he's got a bunch of Archons and a bunch of Templar. That is not the time to make Corruptor. Archons and Templar are going to be like pfft, just throwing AoE into Corruptors like crazy, and the, the Corruptors are gonna die. If you would have gone Hydra Lurker, Hydra Lurker deals with this army, which is not, like basically his entire army that he has right now. It deals with that army really well. And then your Hydras can also deal with little bits of sky toss especially if he has zero weapons on sky toss and you have level two armor already that's the kind of shit you got to think about you got to use the like you can't just do what like on paper you go Cor corruptor beats carrier every time you got to use what you've given yourself the, the tools you've given yourself and you've given yourself a fucking lurker hydra hammer that you're not going to use if you just make corruptor now like those corruptors should have been lurkers because if you go Hydra Corruptor, you have no way to deal with Storm, Archon, or Charge Lot. What's going to happen is, is you're going to take the fight. You're going to overkill the carrier. He's going to storm your Hydras. He might lose the carrier, and all of your Hydras are dead. And then you you might have all your all your Corruptors also might die in the process. And if they don't, you're going to have a couple of Corruptors like flying around being like, well, what do we do now? We only killed two carriers, and he's got an entire ground army. Because that is what he has. A ground army. 
Corruptors make more sense when he actually has Sky Toss. He does not have Sky Toss right now. I like that you made the Spire for a potential transition. God, my nose is so blocked. I feel like I'm talking so weird. You made the Spire for a pot potential transition, but it's too early to transition to it because you haven't dealt with his guard army yet. If you went Lurker Hydra here, what you could do is you could starve him out. Like your Lurkers and your Hydras could break his new bases and he would have no money to actually transition. So again, you've, you've missed the window of opportunity for Lurker. It's gone. And you have you have half you know, all your companies are sitting there, half your hydras are sitting there, and you're engaging with half your army across the map. It's just becoming or unorganized, and it's becoming a bit fucked up. And you don't go lurker. Yeah, it's because I think you're, you're you're. It's because you're in the moment. You're in that moment where you're platinum again. We're be, we're going to be forgiving here. This is platinum, guys. So. I don't expect you to know everything perfectly, but you're getting caught up in the moment where you're trying to play at a pace that is more than you can handle right now. And this, again, all it does is it takes experience to get there. There's no other answer to it. And what I'm telling you right now will help you get there faster. But make like, for instance, you have to really pay close attention to like the windows of opportunity you're giving yourself. And like, for instance, the first one you did, the roaches, you totally missed the window of roaches because you over teched. You, you like you went for a roach timing, right? Your plan was to go for a roach attack. What I would ask you is, is why does it make sense to go for a roach attack, but delay your roach attack to go for a hive, to go for a lurker den, to go for a hydrogen, to go for a spire, to go for upgrades for a spire, to go for an infestation pit? Why are we doing all of these things that cost fuckloads of gas and then just going to do a roach attack? It makes no sense. Just like, why are we going to do a hydralisk timing and we're going to go for Corruptors now. And the Corruptors aren't even going to be here. And we're going to go for... Like, we're, we're investing into Corruptors. And we're still going to do a Hydra timing. It makes no sense. Because all it does is it weakens your timing. Like, your timing not only gets later. So it's easier for your opponent to deal with. But you waste so much resources in the process. Because you're throwing... You're, if your timing is late, it has a higher percent chance to fail. And you throw all that money away. All the, all the When your timing fails, all of this just gets deleted. And it's like... If we literally add it up, this is uh, 800 resources of roaches, and this is, uh, what is 150 times 13? That many resources of hydras. Pl add those together. 800 plus that. That's probably somewhere around like 3,000 resources or like 2,500 resources. That's a fuckload of resources that just gets down the drain. Or like more like 2,000 something. Yeah, you, you get the point though. It's just a waste. So you killed a couple cannons and a couple gateways. Like, I don't know what this Rodos is doing. There is zero reaction. <laughs> okay, now you're trying to multi-prong him. And the, the problem with multi-prong is is if you allow the Protoss to have too much time, Multiprong starts dropping off and failing a lot harder when the Protoss has enough time to go. Now he's going into Death Ball. He actually is now starting to build up Carrier. Now I would be like, okay, now it's starting to get kind of scary. Because, you've, you, again, you've missed the window to do a Lurker timing. And now he's starting to get a Death Ball army. And you're not really going to get much done with Hydras against a bunch of cannons. And a Death Ball. You're going to start throwing away your resources a bit harder. So as you can see, you're over here. You push him. He pushes back. Your entire army here is going to die. Now, what is this? This is this is the trade-off, right? This is supposed to be doing something while this does something. This is just dead. That did literally nothing. It all just kind of suicided. And now what's this doing? It's going deep into his base. And you are attacking his base with a bunch of Hydras. You kill the gateway. You kill the core. Also, I gotta say, I don't know what this Protoss is doing because his reaction time is ridiculously fucking slow. <laughs> I 
Is he making an observer? Okay, he did. So I, I would just say that wasn't worth it. You can see the you can see the difference here. You've lost a ton more resources than he has. These trades are kind of putting you into a hole, essentially, economically. But again, your creep spread is amazing. Your creep spread is so fucking good. But now here's the thing, right? You gotta you gotta be careful about compositions. Your opponent is going sky toss, right? He is going sky toss. Now I would say the fact that you just made 15 brood lords right now is okay. And why is it okay? Because he has mostly ground, and you just confirmed that with your hydras. He has not been throwing away his army on the ground little by little to replace in the air. So right now, this army actually seems okay for you. This mass broodlord army with corrupt army, it works right now. However, if you actually take a fight with him, but you're not able to push any... Let's say a lot of your corruptors die, all of his carriers die, a lot of your corruptor dies, and your broodlords all stay alive, for the most part. You gotta be really careful then, if he just starts remaxing into pure sky toss, and not mass ground again. And you just stay on fuckloads of broodlords. You gotta be like that's when it comes to compositional balance with limited supply. So again, yours makes sense right now for the fact that he's anti ground heavily, which is where Brood Lords will shine. But yeah. Now here's another thing though. Here, here's another thing that makes this uh, problematic for you. You're going mass Brood Lords with your entire army. You're maxed out. You have nothing mobile anymore, really. You have one Roach and five Hydras. This is it. All of your mineral lines are exposed. If you make an army that is like this, where it's a fucking snail that walks across the map, you 100% have to make spine crawlers at every base. Because if your opponent does any type of run by, uh, like uh, uh, like economy killing counterattacks, all of your drones will die. So if five zealots go over here, five zealots go over here, and your broodlords decide to go defend this side, well, all these drones are going to die. And so is the hatchery. Like, you have to make spines now. And if you don't make spines, you're going to be like. Oh, my life sucks because every time I try to leave my base, I just get counterattacked. But at least you have good crew spread, so that gives you vision to like where he's going all the time. But you really have to make spines with this. Like the fact that you're not is super scary. But you're you're 100 percent gonna win this fight as long as you don't throw away your corruptors and do a bunch of archons, because his army is horribly suited to deal with brood lords. So the fact that he made brood lords this time is not bad. But. If this dude realized what you were doing with his observer, which he just saw your army, he would, should be counterattacking you right now. He should not try to fight this army. He should be counterattacking you and going into more air over time. Like losing units as he kills your drones and then just make more air to replace it. Okay, you're fighting him now. And now he's going to lose. Because all of his army is going to get mowed down by brute lords. You just have to focus fire the carrier. With your Corruptor. I mean, you're not doing that. There we go. Yeah, you did You did, You did. did not focus fire the carrier for such a long time that he actually won that fight. You should have totally won that fight. But now, for instance, remember how we talked about? You killed his army, other than the air. Now you're going to kill him with the reinforcements of Corruptors. But now you have to be careful about what he remaxes into, and this is where scouting comes in again. Changelings or something like that makes a lot of sense here. Or putting pressure on before he has remade an army makes sense, because then you force him to make what you want him to make. Like everything at once, which means he's going to make hybrid, gateway, and stargate. So if you just go back home and just sit there, that's kind of scary. You've really got to focus on those, those carriers a lot more than you are. Micro is something that develops over time. It's hard. It really it is hard. Uh, you'll get better at it over time. Your creep, your creep is, again, good, though. I love it. So you're attacking him right away. I agree with this. But now this is the shit I'm talking about. You don't know what he's doing. Like, fully. You don't know what he's doing. And if you overmake Broodlord, that is scary. Right now you have only seven corruptors, and now you have uh, you have seventeen broodlords and seven corruptors, and you're maxed, so you can't even make anything else at this point. You have more corruptors coming as well, thank God, but they're not even close to coming out though. They're not going to be here for another twenty seconds, like just for build time, and they're not going to get across the map for another like 15-20 seconds. That is scary. 
if you overcommit your broods and don't have no and like he has enough like carriers to kill your corruptor that are currently here, you will lose all of your brood lords. You see, if he focus fires your your corruptor with his archon, you one hundred percent would lose this fight. And now you have all these naked brood lords. And he's killing broodlings, surprisingly. Like you guys are both having some micro problems, uh, obviously, but um. You got to be super careful about overcommitting the compositions, so you know he's you, know, you knew that he was starting to switch into Sky Toss before you killed his entire ground army, and you just killed his entire ground army. So be very careful about overcommitting to a ground army again if he was already starting to switch Sky Toss when he still had a ground army, which means he's probably going to commit even more into Sky Toss when you kill his ground army because you're gonna you're gonna delete ground supply that he's gonna replace into air supply. You have to be super careful about shit like that. And you're, you're putting yourself in a situation now where your brewlords could all die. And your captors are getting caught on the interceptors again. While the voids are just melting them. You gotta you gotta micro a bit more than you are. If you don't want to micro, if you here's the thing, if you don't want to micro for now, if you're like if you, like your your strong point is definitely your mechanics. Even then, it could be I'm not even saying it's like perfect. It could definitely be even better, but your weak point is definitely your micro. So if you want to micro, again, it just takes time. Like you will eventually have to micro no matter what. But if you want to focus on just like winning games for now in platinum because you can just sheerly overpower them through mechanics, because you totally could do that. Focus on the things I talked about earlier, like your timings. Don't delay shit for no reason. Like, don't do a roach timing, but then delay it because you take every fucking tech Zerg has, including a hive. And then and then do a timing. Because if you actually were assertive about how you do timings, you could actually deny expansions from Protoss, and they would never even get to the stage that they're at right now. Ever. In Platinum League. It would never happen. It doesn't matter. Also, you got to realize, it doesn't matter how many drones you have when you take your tech. It matters what time of the game you're at when you do it. The fact that you were tied with Protoss in supply is very bad for Zerg. Remember how I talked like remember how I said you could have maxed out like at seven minutes on roaches? You seriously could do that. You could one hundred percent max out around seven minutes on roaches, and you did not max out until ten. That is super late. And again, again that's just like assuming you're going with just pure roaches, right? That's assuming it's just pure roaches. Uh, but yeah, uh, you have, you, you do have some qualities. Like there's a lot of, I would say there's a lot of work here for you. I had a lot of work ahead of you to progress as a late game player. But if you just focus on mid game for now, I think that's the best thing you can do. Focus on Roach Hydra compositions and maybe add in lurkers for like late game. And just focus on Roach Hydra Lurker pushes. Roach Hydra Lurker pushes. Roach Hydra Lurker pushes. Focus on that. And focus on hitting timings better while maintaining good creep spread like you do. Like you have. That would be the best thing you could do. Because you're... There's so many holes in your gameplay here with Broodlord that you just did. In so many ways that you could have lost the game. When I do feel like you played better than the than the Protoss. Overall. Because your cruise thread was fucking... Like, your cruise thread is why I think you should have won this game. Just focus on the game plan that you don't let your opponent expand. Like, you're allowing your opponent to have so much time to do whatever they want. And you're not doing what you need to be doing with what you're giving yourself. I hope that makes sense. Uh... Again, if, if if something doesn't make sense, I highly encourage you guys to go back and watch this again. There was a lot of things, a lot of processes we talked about throughout this. And it takes a lot of time to reiterate them over and over and over and over. 
and we've already I've already I did try to say them like four times a piece already and throughout the the analysis. But it's just really basically, if you have a game plan, make sure you execute your game plan as the priority and then have game plan B, game plan C behind it after you execute game plan A, your priority. Like for instance, if your priority is to do a roach timing, do not prepare for game plan B and C, like these fallbacks, before you even do game plan A, which is a roach timing. Do not make all this all this gas investment of tech and all this other random shit and then do a roach timing after anyways. It's going to make your roach timing always fail. And that concept applies to everything. It applied to your hydras as well this game when you started going corruptors. And then you, yeah, it just, yeah. You got you to gotta be assertive about how you attack your opponent. I hope it makes sense. Uh, proxy and chill. Much love for doing an analysis, man. I appreciate it. Uh, again, your creep thread's amazing, so keep that up. Uh, and then, you know, go from there. And if you fix your early game creep thread, it'll be even better. But thank you for doing analysis, dude. And thank you guys for watching as well. Until next time, guys, good luck in your own games. And if you're if someone here is like, holy fuck, vibe, this is platinum, but this is so confusing. I agree. This is above platinum level. Go watch Beta Gym series and uh, go look at the platinum level games in Beta Gym uh, on the YouTube channel. Bronze to Gym series 2019. Vibu, Zerg games. You'll be like, wow, this is much easier. And it literally does exactly what we're talking about. Gives you map control with creep spread. And you deny expansions. Uh, and it gives you the idea of how to control the map first. And then you start worrying about micro. Uh, because right now, this is putting it in such a difficult position. Because you're allowing your proto the Protoss opponent to have so much money. Which means you have to micro really well then. Anyways, guys, take it easy. Much love. <clears throat> Good luck. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh. And that's how you get gym series. That's how you get GM with the bronze gym series, boys. Oh, baby. That could be you. <laughs>